If you have one of these initiatives at your workplace, you may recognise it as the occasional yoga class or a communal fruit bowl that, to lift your spirits at work. But do these kinds of workplace wellness initiatives actually do the job they're intended to, to make people feel well? For more on this is workplace wellness specialist Lauren Parsons. Lauren, good morning. Do they work? The fitness classes, the yoga, all those, do they make us well at work? Yeah, Ryan, I think the challenge is that a fruit bowl or a fitness class isn't going to help the majority of your team because the people that will gravitate towards it probably need it the least. So what businesses need to be doing is really taking a strategic approach, looking at the highest levels of leadership, so getting their CEOs and senior leaders on board and actually trained with the skills to understand how do they boost their well-being and how do they show up to demonstrate, to encourage and to tolerate certain things that create that culture to support people's well-being. Okay, so if if the lolly jar or whatever is not the way to go, what is a specific thing I could do tomorrow as a manager or a boss of a company to make a better culture? So you could learn how to develop trust with your team and build those pillars of trust. You could learn how to catch people doing things right and provide immediate specific praise. You could encourage your staff to get outdoors for meetings or start meetings in a, an open and active way. So there's lots of small skills that can be used and we know that the, there's positive returns from this when it's done correctly. Deloitte showed a $4.2 or well, dollars twenty return for every dollar invested in wellbeing when you're looking at your culture. I guess you could just get to know your staff and understand what makes them tick because everyone's a little bit different, aren't they? Exactly, and that's a key thing in terms of being able to respond to mental distress when leaders can recognise how their staff normally are operating and they'll know the signs to look for when somebody is perhaps experiencing mental distress. And, and while it's not a legal requirement to look after people's ability to manage stress outside of work, it's only within the work as a legal requirement, it makes sense to equip your staff with skills to be able to respond to stress, to still be able to thrive and to be able to boost their mental resilience so that they can do better work. Yeah. Hey, Lauren, thank you very much for clearing that all up. I mean, we long suspected these things didn't really do what they set out to do. But I think I think employers probably are a bit, at, at a bit of a loss. They, they feel like they want to help. And are they box ticking exercises? Well, they can be. But I think the thing is that when you look at the research, we know that a mentally healthy worker delivers 143 effective hours a month, whereas somebody that's unhealthy delivers only 49. So we can effectively triple someone's productivity by boosting their well-being when we do it the right way. Wow, that is some interesting numbers at the end there. Lauren, thank you very much for that workplace wellness specialist, Lauren Parsons, with us this morning. That's it for today.